So what we have here uh, in verses 38 uh, through 42, we have Jesus uh, traveling through the country. Um, we see that he is traveling and he's coming from Jerusalem to Mary and Martha's house. Uh, we see that most scholars think that he was coming to Bethany and that's where they live. Um, so Mar Martha and Mary welcome Jesus into their home. And I want to call your attention that these two women um, are very uh, familiar with Jesus because they are the sisters of Lazarus um, who Jesus raised and we see the account of that in John 11. This, so they got to be pretty good friends because we see how much Jesus loved Lazarus. So you have, to, you have to take into account that Martha and Mary were probably pretty close to Jesus as well. You can imagine that Martha wanted to have everything perfect. They, she wanted to have the house ready, uh, the table set, the food had to be good. Um, I know we have a lot of ladies in here that know what I'm talking about. The in-laws are coming over, the house has to be clean, um, and everything has to be perfect. And that's where we get into the meat of our text today. So if you don't mind, will you stand with me for the reading of the Word of God? Let's read in Luke 10, 38 through 42. While they were traveling, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha... who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice, and it will not be taken away from her. Let us bow. Father, we thank you for the privilege together in your house today to come before you in worship. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will speak through me. Lord, let me hide behind your cross and that I'm just a vessel today for the message that you have prepared. Lord, I pray that you will just soften the hearts of everyone here, that your Holy Spirit will do its work, Lord, and that we will leave this place uh, with things to chew on and how to become a better follower of you, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. It's in your name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. The first point today is that we should be found at the feet of Jesus. We see that in verse 39. It says, She had a sister named Mary who also sat at the Lord's feet who, and was listening to what he said. Our first priority should always be spending time with Jesus. It was tradition in the Jewish culture for the, for the students of a teacher to sit at their feet and to listen to their teaching. In Acts 22.3, we see that Paul was said he was brought up by Gamaliel, and that was his teacher. Um, so that tells us that the disciples would often be found at the feet of the rabbis or the teachers. It was an act to show that the teacher had ultimate authority over them, and they were humbling themselves in their posture to show that the teacher could, that they could learn from the teacher. We see that this is the position that Mary took as soon as Jesus came into the house. Mary realized that she was in the presence of Jesus, and it was far more important doing what Jesus wanted rather than what a Mary, Martha expected of her. Mary's first priority wasn't preparing the house, but spending time with Jesus. That should be our first priority in our life and our prime concern over all things, no matter if the alternative is good or bad. Secondly, I want to look at and say, when you take your eyes off Jesus, you begin to worry too much about yourself. Verse 40, Martha was distracted by many tasks, and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. Here we see Martha trying to serve and prepare the meal and get the house ready for Jesus while Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. Any normal person would look at this passage and automatically become frustrated with Martha, especially people who have siblings. I mean, you got people coming over and your brother's just over here lollygagging and you're over here doing all the work. And you're like, come, come on. Like, Mom, make him do something. But see... That's not what was happening here. Martha's serving wasn't the problem. It was her distraction from Jesus' presence that was the problem. Her heart was in the wrong place. She was focusing too much on what she could do for Jesus rather than what Jesus could do for her. Martha wasn't worried if Jesus was pleased. She was worried if all the tasks she thought had to be done were taken care of. Martha had taken her eyes off Jesus and started focusing on what she was doing and what she thought was important. It then led her to become frustrated with Mary and she, when she was actually doing what Christ expected. Uh-oh. 
she started playing the comparison game. And I feel like a lot of us do this today. And I believe one of the number one ways that Satan works in our lives is making us think that we're a better Christian than someone else. Folks, the only person we should compare our walk with or our Christianity with is Jesus. He is our standard to compare ourselves with. Serving should never be a distraction from Jesus. It's great. Jesus calls us to serve him through different tasks. He calls us service through different ministries. However, I think sometimes the reason why we serve can become a bit skewed or why we do the things we do in our everyday life. We can get the wrong view on why we do those things. Are you doing something because it's what you want to be done? Or are you doing something because it's what Christ wants to be done? Martha was serving and getting the house ready because Martha was serving and getting the house ready for Jesus because she wanted to do what she thought was right. Martha never stopped and asked if that's what Jesus truly desired. We have so many things that we do every single day. And we, we have so many things we do every single day. But how many times do we take a step back evaluate the situation and ask ourselves why we are doing these things or if it pleases Christ. Colossians 3.17 says that whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. When you take your eyes off Jesus as Martha did, it becomes easy to get lost in the motions and lose sight of what really pleases Christ. But when your focus is on him, it's easy to see what he truly wants and desires. That leads me to the next point, that God desires our love more than anything. Hosea 6.6 6 says, For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than the burnt offerings. This is the time when the Old Testament, when Hosea was prophesying to Israel that their nation would be uh, destroyed if they didn't repent. And it's because the sacrifices covered up the sin because Jesus hadn't came to give a sacrifice on the cross. And so we see that he says, he speaks through Hosea and says, For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. However, we see that sacrifice really wasn't what God wanted. God wanted their love and he wanted their attention. God has always and will always desire for us to love him more than any act of service or anything that we can give him. He didn't want their sacrifices in the Old Testament, and he doesn't want our serving now if it doesn't stem from a heart of love for Christ. It should be our love for Christ that pushes us to serve him. Spurgeon says this, Martha's frustration is typical of those who diligently serve with good intent, but also forget to sit at the feet of Jesus. And the Martha spirit says, is the work is done, is that not all? But the Mary spirit asks whether Jesus is well pleased or no. All must be done in his spirit or by his name or nothing is done. God, it's while we're spending time with Jesus that we're filled with the desire and his love to serve him. This is why our focus and where we must be found is always at the feet of Jesus. The second point today is that your relationship is far more important than anything of this world. And I want to take a look at Jesus' response in verse 41 and 42. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're worried, about, worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice. And it will not be taken away from her. Jesus will always show us what matters through his love. As we read Jesus' reply, we see that he calls Martha twice by name, which we can't just blow past this because in Scripture, this, most of the time this is with a sense of sincerity and love. We see that he wasn't necessarily frustrated with Martha for her serving. She had good intent. He just wanted her to realize what truly mattered. And what truly mattered was that she got to experience a personal relationship with him. The next point, serving isn't a substitute for spending time with Jesus. I don't want, you to, I don't want to preach this sermon and you guys think I'm against serving. Not at all. Uh, our lives should be a complete service for Christ. Everything we do should be for Christ. However, serving Jesus isn't a replacement for spending time with Jesus. I think a lot of times our flesh... Uh, and Satan tries to convince us that doing things for Jesus or doing good things can make us right with God. Even though most of us know that it doesn't make us right with God. But we think, oh, we, we didn't spend time with the Lord. I'll do this good. Or I'll do that good. But nothing can make us good with the Lord other than our relationship with him. I think we kind of got a glimpse of this when COVID hit uh, back in March. We had to shut down everything and completely pause life. And that included church. Um, 
All of a sudden, we couldn't go to church and uh, be involved in these ministries and serve and have people pour into us. We couldn't hear a sermon. Uh, and I think the shutdown showed all of us that our faith is in Jesus alone. Uh, there's nothing we can do to make our relationship better with Christ other than go to Christ. The one thing that matters is our relationship with Christ, and everything else is complementary to that relationship. How do we expect this relationship with Christ to grow if we aren't sitting at his feet? Say I don't know Brian. I go to his house every day, and I, I can mop his floor. I can do his dishes. I can do the laundry. I can serve him in every single way. He appreciates it. Don't get me wrong. But it doesn't create a personal relationship with him. When I go to his house and I serve him, it doesn't make that personal relationship. In order to further the relationship, I'd have to sit down with Brian, talk to him, get to know him, and have a sense of vulnerability in, with him. Just like going to Brian's house and serving him doesn't mean I have a relationship with him. Coming to the Lord's house and being involved in ministry and listening to a sermon and saying a prayer every once in a while does not mean that I have a relationship with the Lord. I know a lot of you probably think I'm preaching to the choir, and I might be. But I think one of the biggest flaws in the church today, in the American church, and why we see the decline in churches, is that we have too many people who know Jesus, know who Jesus is, but we don't have enough people who have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you could just know who he was or what he did for you. He died on the cross so that you could have a personal relationship with him and experience what he did for you. When you know Jesus, all other things fall into their proper place. Jesus points out that Martha is worried about so many things that don't matter. Let's read back in verse 41 again. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. When you know Jesus, everything else falls into its proper place. Everything else automatically should become second in your life. Martha was worried about all these things that didn't matter. She was worried about serving. She was worried about what the house looked like. Man, I'm, I'm glad that I don't have to have everything ready whenever I go to Jesus Christ. Because if we had to have everything ready, we would never be ready to present ourselves to Jesus. He says, Martha, Martha, you're worried about so many things. I can see Jesus looking at me in my life so many times saying, Collier, Collier, come on, man. You're worried about all these things that don't matter. We put so much value and emotion and effort into things that really aren't that big of a deal, especially when we hold them up to our relationship with Jesus. Now, I'm not, it's so easy to take our eyes off of Jesus and get distracted by the things of the world. I'm not saying all things are from the devil. I'm not, that's, that's not what I'm saying. There are many good things in the world, and I 100% I believe that God has given us things to enjoy in our life. But it's when we focus more on what happens with these things in our life and in the world rather than what happens to our relationship with Christ that these things become a problem. And we see that Martha was more worried and concerned with the meal she was preparing than who she was preparing the meal for. Jesus says, Martha, listen. These things are so trivial. I want your heart. I want your affection. I want you to love me. This is the most important thing in your life. And when you put your relationship with Christ first, he will take care of the rest. That's a promise. Martha was distracted and upset about so many things, things that were trivial compared to learning and deepening her relationship with Christ. If there's anything that's in the way of you spending time with Jesus, whether the thing's good, whether the thing's bad, there's a lot of things in this world that are they are not bad things. They're good things. But a lot of times, Satan uses those to distract us from what really matters, and that's our relationship with Jesus. And if there's anything in the way of your relationship with Christ, then that needs to be cut out, whether it's good or bad. Jesus expects to be first place in your life because he lived his whole entire life as if you were first place in his. The third point today is we are all left with a choice, Jesus or the world. Let's look at verse 42. But one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. In Jesus' response to Martha, we see that he gives two options. Martha made the choice to be anxious and concerned about unnecessary things. However, Mary chose to be content with Jesus. We're all faced with this choice today, except, folks, it's not between a meal and a conversation. It's between serving the world and an eternity with Christ. I want to point out that Martha wasn't completely unconcerned with Jesus. She was worried about Jesus. She was worried about what Jesus thought. 
She was serving and preparing the meal for him, but she was distracted from his presence. I think there might be a lot of people here today who are concerned with Jesus. They aren't, they aren't just putting him to the side, but they're distracted from his presence. You're called to be completely focused on Christ. He doesn't want half of your life. He wants all of your life. He's, lukewarm Christians are not something that Christ enjoys. Jesus wants your full attention and surrender. And where you put your focus has eternal significance. Jesus points out that what Mary chose truly matters. She chose a relationship with Christ that will never be taken away. We have a choice between serving the world and being in relationship with our Savior, Jesus. We see that Mary chose Christ. And he points out that's not only the correct choice, but it's a choice that will never be taken away. It will never be taken away. Our relationship with Christ is the only thing in this entire world that we can put our full confidence in. The beauty of this personal relationship is that it will never be taken away. It's unwavering, it's constant, and forever. It's honestly the only thing that truly matters in this life. You're faced with the choice today. Are you going to set your focus on Jesus? Or are you going to set your focus on the world? The world is corrupt. It's dying. It's so enticing, though, isn't it? Just uh, It's so enticing to go with the flow of things, to, to do the things of the world that our flesh wants. But Jesus calls us to be countercultural. He calls us to follow him no matter the cost. Loving Jesus and serving Jesus go hand in hand, and we've well established that so far, that, that Jesus, our relationship matters with Jesus. We've established that. But the second most important thing in our life is what we do with that relationship. I'm not saying that we should be a theological couch potato and sit over here and just focus, just keep your eyes on Jesus. The Lord's coming, times are bad, keep your eyes on Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. And I feel like that's a trap we can also fall into is, oh man, I'm just, the world's getting bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit around and I'm going to wait on Jesus. Lord, please come back, Jesus. I need, I need you. This world's bad. No. We're called to be on mission. We're supposed to be focused on our relationship with Jesus and focused on on how we can share Jesus with others. My professor this uh, semester said, yeah, we, look, we will look forward to the, like, to the return of Christ. That's our hope. And yeah, this world is awful. But we need to have a focus on Jesus, looking up to the clouds, saying, Jesus, come on, but also looking down at the same time. If your focus is just completely on Jesus, you're going to trip on something along the way. So our focus needs to be on Jesus and on our world around us. In this passage, we see that the thing of most importance here is our relationship with Jesus. But what we do with that relationship is almost just as crucial. Our relationship with Christ and serving Christ go hand in hand. It says in James that a faith without works is dead. And in Philippians, that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Let's take this right here as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I know, it's odd. But the bread is the base of your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just as spending time with Christ is the base of your service to him. The peanut butter and jelly is your service to Christ. After you have the bread, then you can begin to have the peanut butter and jelly. This is why having our focus on Jesus and spending time with him is so important. Our love for Jesus and serving him go hand in hand, but it isn't until we have our focus on our relationship with him that we can serve him, just as you can't have the peanut butter and jelly until you have the bread. Jim, throw up the takeaway. <laughs> we live in a world that is constantly fighting for our focus, and we have an enemy in Satan that is fully aware of that. Are you going to be like Martha and be worried about the distractions of the world? Or are you going to be like Mary and have your focus continually on Jesus? In a world full of chaos and darkness, we should always be found at the feet of Jesus where there's light and hope putting him before all other things in our life. Keeping our eyes focused on Jesus leads us to a life that is confident in a proven king rather than a wavering world. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, he is calling. It's the only thing that matters today. It's the only thing that has eternal weight. Jesus is calling. Today is the day of salvation.